Hey YouTube and everyone watching on YouTube and everyone who is currently watching here on Twitch. Now it's time for us to say hi YouTube actually. Um, this is uh, a check-in on my 2020 resolution which I had in the 2020 resolution list video where I want to play every investigator in a campaign in the year 2020. Um, mostly to continually assess my knowledge on the game and my ranking of these investigators and how I think I find their power level to also explore new things and also because because I'm uh, playing the hell out of uh, out of Arkham Horror and I might as well make a little goal because then I can also like uh, get this going am I saying 2020 2020 and 2022 are too close together I think there should be some law that separates them um, so in this year, as you can see, I have this little chart on the screen just over here. I have a star if I've played them in a campaign so far in 2022, and then a star if I've played them uh, for the testing is in um, a standalone style. So it's not a full campaign. So as you can see, I played Daisy Walker and Jacqueline Fine on the channel as um, part of the um, Arcane Insight and Shards of the Void. And then Jim Culver was from the Labyrinth's... Um, the epic multiplayer we did with the patrons. Uh, but as you can see, I have played so far this month in a campaign enough to get through four, which as I know is a very tiny amount, right? Like four isn't that much. We have a bunch that are in the process though that I haven't finished, um, but these are the only four that I feel like I have enough to talk about. Um, are we gonna get through all of them? I hope so. I'm gonna try my darndest to get through all of them, and if not, I'm going to get through as many as I can, but this is our way to track, and I'm going to come back to this video at the end of each month to give updates as well as showcase the decks that I played them in to kind of show you where my thought process might have come from it. So, let's start by looking at, um, let's look at uh, Rita, because she is the title of the video, and she's also the one that I've had, like, the most fighting with. I've hated Rita for a very long time. There's no denying that. And I can now say, after playing her out, focusing a bit more, I don't hate her anymore. I don't hate Rita anymore. I actually like playing Rita. Wow, what the frick? Uh, opinions can change. Things can change. It's cool. Uh, I think now she's not... I used to rate her a D. Um, I think that she can be... I don't know exactly where she's settled yet because I think she... It really depends on how you build her, but I think that she can like she can be like a solid B tier investigator. I'm even willing to go that high. I think there's a lot of things that can make her go well, and um, I am happy to be wrong about uh, about Rita. So as you can see with this deck, uh, this is uh, still mid campaign. We haven't I haven't finished the campaign yet, so that's why things aren't over here. But to me, what really got this Rita going is this crafty oh my god crafty are you kidding me this card i love this card if i see a crafty in my opening hand i'm like hallelujah i'm born i'm born um it's really good the, the trick cards just costing cheaper and then using them to bump up things when you have the money to actually pay for them is kind of cool. One thing as well is that someone pointed out in the comments is that Crafty works with Mariner's Compass to also work with uh, Dark Horse, uh, which sounds kind of fun. Um, so like you could use it to go even higher with it. Um, I think Crafty is really cool. And uh, this is a combat focused. We have Pete Sylvester because uh, he's my boyfriend and I love him and I'm going to play him until the ends of the earth even if I say I'm not going to. And uh, he's honestly just, he's doing fine. Like, he's uh, hes Pete. He's doing his job. He's putting our foot up. He's putting our brain up so we're defended in the mythos phase and we can evade really well. And yeah, that's kind of, uh, kind of been going sick. I've been running this 18 Derringer. And actually, like, to be uh, fully upfront, this Rita deck is played in a custom campaign rerun on the Patreon. So this one's not on the YouTubes. Um, however... I am playing the, I'm playing with a challenge mode that's put in where there's a briefcase that you can carry. 
And if you carry it long enough, you get a bonus. And long enough is a long time. So it takes up a hand slot. However, if at any time you open that briefcase, uh, you lose it, right? Uh, so what I'm doing is unfortunately Rita got the briefcase. So I have to play with a one-handed fighter. Which <laughs> is ultimately fine. But the thing is, if I play my fire axe and I have a lot of resources, I'm like, frick, what do I do? However, Rita is actually still pulling her weight even with one hand as the fighter. Like, I see like a three health. Like, I, like there are some big enemies that are still a problem for Rita. <clears throat> and that's why I think just <clears throat> inherently she can't be A tier yet. But I think that, <clears throat> excuse me, my voice. Uh, one second, I'm going to pause the video and drink some water. Uh, I, th I think that Rita is, what's keeping her from there is, apart from like, like it's just the, the weapons that she has available to her, right? Um, the, the weapons that she has available to her aren't like that fantastic yet. There is Chainsaw, of course, but that's expensive. <laughs> that requires, that requires a, lot of, <clears throat> a lot of setup for it. Um, another card that's just kind of been incredible is Sweeping Kick. Really good card um, because it effectively deals three damage. Yum. And it costs one. And you're going to be fighting at eight with no other bonuses. It, it goes really well with Rita. Um, this bait and switch uh, has never worked. <laughs> I'm keeping it in here still on the hope and the prayer. I thought I'd try it out here. Um, it's just like every time <clears throat> I've had it, I've just, it's never been a good time to play it. It's never been a good time to play it. Uh, I still see like it's potential, right? It's super cheap and it's a trick with crafty. It costs me literally nothing, but it's still just, I don't know why. I don't know why. It's just never done anything. Yeah, Pilfer's great. <clears throat> Belly of the Beast is great. Track Shoes, once I found out how they actually work, have become really good. Uh, and I think Rita, two thumbs up. I'm loving Rita. All right, let's go on to Winifred next. But I'm going to just drink some more water. One second, YouTube. Okay, Winifred Habamuck. This is my first time playing her, and she is also in the... Um, in the Call of the Plague Bearer run. So, I feel like... I feel like I was bad. <laughs> uh, I, I just feel like I haven't really cracked Winifred open yet. Um, <clears throat> the Dairy Maneuver, which is left over here, was from when I had the cheaper lockpicks. Just as kind of like some security. And also like it's a wild. So it's an easy thing for her ability. I'm actually still surprisingly digging the Darien Maneuver though. I think it actually has been like kind of nice. But it does look a little bit weird in this deck. Um, like this deck is just a green deck. And I know that shouldn't be a surprise. Because like Winifred Habamuck is just a green <laughs> investigator. So like I shouldn't be too surprised. But I feel like, like maybe it's my own play style, but I'm just not, I'm not using her ability that much because I'm like, I have eight cards in hand and they're, I like, my brain is just like, there's not really a reason to change it. One thing of note is that this pickpocketing has been absolutely useless here just because Rita has been doing all her evading because she is, uh, this is in companion with Rita here. Um, so I do wish, you actually even see this in my notes over here, pickpocketing, I was just basically like, pickpocketing sucks, right? It's just been not great. Um, as a fighter, yeah, yeah, no, I, I agree. Like, this one is built as a clover. The, the 25 automatic seems really nice with Winifred. And, like, Winifred has been doing her job, right? Like, she has been doing, like, she's been doing good. Like, I've been having a really good time with the campaign, and Winifred has been very good at getting clues. Like, I don't think that Winifred has been bad. I don't think she has been failing. I think just I haven't cracked her yet. And maybe there's just nothing to crack, and I'm just doing an okay job playing her. But, like, 
there's just, to me, there's something missing for Winifred that I haven't figured out yet. Which is kind of like, I'm excited to try it again, but I'm also kind of like bored of Winifred. And that might just be because I'm doing standard green things, right? And it could just be that, right? But her ability just says, like, draw more cards. And when I have eight cards in hand, I'm like, I don't really need those right now. And that might be the wrong choice. But the problem is I know what's in my deck. I know what I don't... I know what I have. I know what I could draw. And what I have is right here, right? It's weird. It's weird. Like I said, like, I could be doing this... I could be, like, I just... I could... There could be something there that's missing. But I think she is still... She's good. She's fun. Uh, and I've been having a good time with Winifred. She's just missing that spice that I don't know exactly what it is yet. I don't know exactly what it is. Um, unfortunately, in the campaign, there's a bunch of things that the Winifred... It's like a... It's their... Um, the Winifred... It's their frozen in fear. Where every time you move, you lose a resource. Which has made Lola absolutely useless for... Uh, for this ability. <laughs> which is a little bit unfortunate. It's non-green cards. That's the spice. I can see that. Okay. Next up here uh, on our list that I'm going to talk about is Ashcan Pete. So this is from a campaign that I've actually finished. And uh, it's not finished on YouTube, but it was finished on Twitch. This is from my Betrayal at the uh, Mountains of Madness campaign. Uh, and this Ashcan Pete deck, the theory was to build around Jacob Morrison, to stand Jacob up, basically get lucky, 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 lucky. Um... Uh, he was built primarily as a Kluver, but because he has a Duke, of course he can fight. And uh, Ashcan Pete absolutely killed it. I had a, I did very good in that campaign. And it was just... <clears throat> yeah, 54 experience in Ashcan. Yeah, no. It was a big campaign too. Like it was, as you can see, chunky on, re on experience because it was effectively nine scenarios. So we had eight going into the last one. And you actually start with five in the campaign. And so there was like a lot of things like, for example, this Observed, which I bought near the end because I was like, what the frick do I buy? Um, but like the precious mementos, they're dirty. They're dirty. Um, the scavenging, which I did upgrade a bit too soon, as I believe it was Dice Gods pointed out when I was playing. <clears throat> they did eventually do something, right? Because they brought a precious memento back and played it. And that me to me, that was like worth it, especially when you have the experience to spend. Like, what else am I going to do? Um, fire extinguisher, I never actually used, but I still enjoyed having. <laughs> and then the ice picks, <clears throat> they're, they were phenomenal. Even if... Like, here's the crazy thing. I think these ice picks were good on two on two player. They probably are not as good. This comment doesn't really apply to three or four player. But I think the ice pick did well, even with just uh, the resourcefuls to recur them, which is kind of crazy. I did get them back one or two times from scavenging. But Ash Campede actually has a tough time scavenging things back because he usually uses Duke to investigate. But the ice picks were really nice, even with minimal recursion. Because there's something that we say, <clears throat> that we always ask. Like, how many deductions do you need to play for it to be good, right? <clears throat> and if your baseline is four, that means you need to get two recursions on this ice pick, right? Like, to me, like, if I play four deductions in a campaign, I'm like, this is going to go very well. And that also translates to ice pick. Same with damage, like... Getting the clues is good, but also getting the damage is good. Just more of it is good. And you don't need to recur it like a hundred times to win the game. And even though obviously that would be super awesome, it's not really a necessity in the way that like even just doing it once or twice, you're going to get good value out of it. Yeah, uh, the Reddy and Jacob worked very well. The Glimmer of Hopes was super clutch for that. Deck was really good. I loved it. I uh, had a great time. It was really nice to play Ash Can Pete again. And uh, Ash Can Pete... Two thumbs up. Love the guy. I'm feeling even better on him than I was before because I actually haven't played him since Dunwich first came out. So it was really nice to get back to him, which is also why I'm doing this resolution for the year. All right. Joining Ashcan Pete is Joe Diamond. And as you can tell from this, I failed to play my... <laughs> my, uh... Unsolved case, uh, three times it looks like. That's kind of funny. You can actually just see that right there. 
All right, so Joe Diamond is, uh, has become one of my favorite investigators. I really like playing Joe. I just, I love how he always is doing something. He is, the reason I like Survivor so much is because they are just, like, they are just good. They are just good at doing the objective. I love just investigating. I love just fighting. And Joe Diamond is really good at that. Synthetic, uh, the horror in Arkham is going very good. Thanks for asking. So this Joe Diamond deck was obviously built with Michael Lee first. So it's a, it's a little bit slow to get running. Um, <clears throat> we went with machetes. I like machetes. We have no tools. We have none of that because this Joe is flex because Joe naturally flexes really well. However, he was skewed more towards fighting. The 45 automatic was there. It survived. <laughs> it made it to the end, mostly just for consistency. But getting the machete and the survival knife was, was important and key. And then we just basically, it's kind of just a standard Joe deck. There wasn't too much spicy, spiciness going off here. Uh, I think it was very strong. I think it was very fun. And Michael Lee and scientific theory in play. The fast composures. Chef's kiss. Absolutely incredible stuff. Especially in Joe. Obviously you need a bit of soak, but just a fast plus one book, plus one fist, turn him into a 5-5. Five five. Get Michael Lee, he's now 6-6. Six, six. Oh my god. Um, obviously, yeah, as the Coffee Man Ken says, we had practice makes perfect. Running deductions, uh, overpowers, only one perception. Uh, Eye of Truth. Which is really good. It, it, it worked really well for us. Uh, obviously, like, it's... You can survive without it. But it was kind of like an upgrade that was just, like, fun. And also actually very helpful. I think what really cracks um, Joe open is a cryptic research in his hunch deck. So if you're going to play Joe and you haven't tried cryptic research in your hunch deck, I suggest it. It is for experience, but like uh, playing this and an Amanda deck on Patreon back in 2020, 2021, 2021. We're 2022, it's 2021. Last year was 2021. This year is 2022. The year before 2021 was 2020. We know how it all works. Um... The, I played it in Amanda deck on Patreon in 2021, and it's really good. It's a good card. Back in the day, like, we would be like, oh, this card's very expensive. But, I mean, a four experience, to me, is worth three cards fast. It's, it might not sound like that much of an improvement over, like, preposterous sketches or deep knowledge. It, like, in, on paper, it doesn't. But in gameplay, it really, uh, it really is better. It's just, it's weird. Because even though I'm saying it right now, in my head, I'm like, but Justin, cryptic research is just, here, let me get that on camera for you guys. That's not, that's the one I'm looking at. Cryptic, what is the, what is the strange, what is the one with the elder thing and he's drawing on it? Why am I blanking on that? Someone in chat will help me. Is it Cryptic Writings? Nope, that's that one. Is it prepos Preposterous Sketches? I did say it. I said it out loud. I said it out loud. We got there. Like, the, um... It's like, this, when you just think about it, is not that big of a difference, right? Two cost, draw three. Nice. You get to deep knowledge, right? You do have a clue on your location. There's a stipulation there and a cost. This is now, like, to, like, people will be wondering, what's the difference? Like, why, wh like, why is this worth for experience, right? But, and it, it, on paper, it really isn't. Like, on paper, you're just like, yuck, right? You're like, poopy. But it's, like, actually just, it feels so much nicer and as um, Complex Enthusiasm in chat says, any investigator location is also strong. But just fast draw three? Like, it's just the fast. The fast. It's the, the fast makes the world of difference. And it's worth the experience my, in my mind. <clears throat> Great card. Great card. Uh, good, good, good Joe deck though. Very good Joe deck. I had a great time with it. I highly recommend playing Joe. Um, 
It's the ancestral knowledge feeling. It's true. An or ancestral recall. Just give me that. Give me that. All right. Now we're on to uh, some stuff that hasn't even seen the light of day on stream. Uh, uh, both in terms of stream and YouTube. Now we're getting into some new things. We got normal schizo tools. So um, there's another YouTuber, um, M, that we have been doing a Dream Eaters challenge where uh, we are doing a normal and parallel where we cannot have any cards. Like we can't, we only have a, a limited collection to build with the investigators. We're playing the normal version and the parallel version of the investigators. I want to play parallel skids because I love parallel skids. Uh, but that meant I also had to play normal skids. Uh, and as you can tell, <laughs> um, as you can tell, well, it's not going too hot. It ain't going too hot. I don't know what it is. I don't know. Uh, maybe. Like, I'm just, it's still just a skids deck. It's still not, like, working that well. I've died twice. Of the two scenarios we've played, I've died twice. Skids is another great reuser of craft Crafty. I can believe that. I can believe that. Um... The it's it's probably down to me, right? But like it's there's just something about skids that still just isn't working. Um, I haven't even had a chance to resolve these switchblade twos, but I do think they are. Um, like I do think like if if you get long like Delilo in play, you get the switchblades two. It's still not like like absolutely goaded, but. Um, give him Sharon's Oval and say goodbye? I can't. It's part of the challenge. I wish I could. Um, like, he's not... He's not... He's just very... Like, you really feel his three in his fist. You really feel the three in his fist. And we've always said that about Skids. And that is the case. Maybe I gotta get him a, a tarot card in here too, right? Um, I am having fun with him because, like, you know, like, when it does work, it's kind of fun. Uh, and, I mean, like, even, like, the Mauser is still just kind of, like, it's still just kind of, like, doing a job, right? Let's try the anti-aircraft bow skids with Venture. That does sound fun. That does sound fun. Um, I believe Skids is my least favorite investigator on the last two, um... On the last two bottom investigators. And honestly, Skids, I'm sorry, brother. It could just be because I'm bad at building you. I'm bad at playing you. But you're down there again. Nothing's changed with Skids. My opinion on him has changed, stayed the same. While Rita has improved, Skids has kind of just stayed where he is. He hasn't dropped. He has not dropped. But he's just kind of stayed at a flat quality level IMO. Okay. Now... Uh, all right, so there's not going to be uh, is, there's not going to look like there's a lot of experience in this deck because there's only four cards with experience, but you'll see that one of them is the red clock. <laughs> so this is the parallel skids to play with uh, on the opposite side of our of our dream eaters challenge, and um, and like he I love I love parallel skids let's see if this opens up so yeah uh spend up to three resources test a base skill value of three against difficulty equal to the number of resources just spent if you succeed gain twice the number of spent resources only foot and wild icons may be committed to this test i love gambling every turn every turn oh my god oh my god it's so fun to gamble with this Oh my god, every turn. And yeah, as this deck just looks a lot better. And it's 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 working. It's built more for clue getting. Like he's a bit more uh, here to get clues. But he can kind of do what's needed. The Derringer here obviously still isn't like optimal. But it's, it's function is... It's function is to kind of focus on clues and help where needed. Uh, M is playing a really cool and really strong... Um, event focused recycling parallel Agnes, which I think might be the flavor you're supposed to play with parallel Agnes as is, but it's really it's really fun to see, and I've been really enjoying that playthrough. Um, and uh, this deck's just been uh, 
great. I love me Parallel Skids. I've loved him. Uh, I've loved him. <sighs> I've loved him since I first played him. I'm going to continue loving him. And it really just, yeah, as uh, someone says, dork Skids as the, uh, as the normal version. Yeah. So parallel Skids is the best parallel, in my opinion. Second is Agnes. Yeah, so far with what I've played or what I've seen played, I agree with that. But, as I said, this is the year of trying new things. This is my first resolution checkup. I want to do one of these at the end of each month. So we'll be back at the end of February. I can't believe January is done. Actually, I can believe it. January is a very long month for me this, this year. Um, but uh, we'll be back in February to do this again, where I'm going to see what other investigators we've played. And hopefully we get like a few more because we have to, there's a lot of investigators we got to get through. A lot of investigators. Um, thank you so much for watching, everybody. I'm quick shout out to our patrons for supporting the channel thank you so much if you want to see some of these deck lists in action they are available only on our patreon page otherwise you can find them in the youtube channels thank you so much for watching have a good one and as always ggs